Hi, in this video, we're going to cover the Chapter 8 Excel Workbook. Okay, let's begin. We're going to start with sheet presentation example number one. All right, so <clears throat> let's look at the story premise. It's a simple random sample of 50 items from a population with a standard deviation of six results in a sample mean of 32. Okay, so it wants us to provide these, provide a 90% confidence interval for a population mean a 95% confidence interval and a 99% confidence interval for the population mean. Okay, so let's begin. Let's look at this sheet here. What this is saying is I can do one, two, one or two things I can actually enter. Let's say I, was, I wasn't given the, the, uh, um, the sample mean or, the, you know, or a population standard deviation I can actually calculate it here, but we were given that. So the sample size that was provided was what? The, and the sample mean was what? It says here, let's look at our starting problem 32. So let's type in 32 here, okay? And, and again, if I was to give you a bunch of values, you just simply enter them here and we'll calculate that sample size for us in the sample mean. Okay, but well, again, the starting problem gave us this information, right? So, so we have our sample size and our sample mean. Now we need to know our population standard deviation. And we need to know the confidence, confidence coefficient, okay? so. The population standard deviation was six. And so, so what's the confidence coefficient? It says here, confidence interval of 90, so 4.9, okay? So, and so what it does is it takes and calculates the 0.9, and our 0.9, it says, what's the level of significance? It's one minus 0.9, so it gives us 0.1. Again, these two numbers, as you can see, adds up to, adds up to one or 100. Our margin of error, here's our margin of error is calculated by using a formula called confidence.norm. It's taking three numbers here, it's taking the number in cell G7, which is our level of significance, is taking the value in G5, which is our standard deviation, is taking our population size right here, which is way up here, which is 50. Okay, so you have know, three numbers for this level of significance. For this margin of error, okay? So margin of error is 0 0.1, 0 0.4, okay? The point estimate value is simple enough as the sample mean, okay? And using these two numbers here, okay, we can determine the lower limit and the upper limit. So I'm taking 32 minus 0 0.4, which is 30.6, and then the upper limit is 32 plus 1.4, which is 33.4. Basically, again, the population mean for 90% is 30.6 to 33.4. Simple enough, I'm taking 32, subtracting 1.4, and adding 1.4, which is a margin of error. Okay? What about 95? Well, if we, from 95%, we got all our numbers here. Nothing changed but one thing our confidence and our confidence coefficient. Which is 0.95. Your numbers now. Our lower limit is now again taking a new margin of error is 1.66. I'm adding and subtracting 1.66 from 32. So we got 30.34 and 33.66. And finally, finally, it wants to know what 99%. So again, everything stays the same. It's 0.99 now. And again, our new margin of error is 2.19. Point estimate still remains 32. But our lower limit now is 29.1. And our upper limit is 34.92. Okay. So that's how you calculate these intervals, all right? For the margin for, for the confidence intervals. Okay. Let's look at example number two. It says here, the sales, our story, let's read the story problem. The sales personnel for Stillings distribution, distribution, distributors <laughs> submit a weekly report of 65 customer contacts made during the week. A sample weekly reports show a sample mean of 19.5 customer contacts per week. The sample standard deviation is 5.2. We're going to provide a 90 and 95% confidence in this. Okay, so let's do that. All right. So 
we'll just look at 90% for now. So let's 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 back up. Let's fill out some numbers here. So it says here we need the sample size, sample mean, and sample standard deviation. It says here um, sample size was 65. So we did 65 customers was our sample. Our mean was 19.5, right? And our standard deviation here, sample standard deviation is 5.2. All right. We have our three numbers here: sample size, sample mean, and sample standard deviation. Okay. So now what's our count? Is we're just gonna work on 90%. So we'll put it up 0.9 here. And then again, now we take our we got since we didn't know, we don't know the population standard deviation, we calculate the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is calculated by taking the 65, our sample size minus one, so we have 64. We're using a new value here, it's called the T value. We're calculating from our, from our from the T table, okay? It says here, this Excel file is T by INB, and we're taking the absolute value, the positive value of that. This is in two numbers here. They're probably in degrees of freedom. So it goes in a, and you, you can look up this value. You, there's tables on the internet, there's tables in your book. It says, take, give me the probability in degrees of freedom, and they'll give you the T value. So our probability is what? Our probability is 90%. Um, but we gotta take 90%, we gotta take one minus 90% divided by two. That's where we get this 0 0.05, okay? It's our probability. And then our degrees of freedom, well, again, that's 65 minus one gives you 64. So the T value for, for 0 0.05 is 1.67, okay? So again, I'm taking your probability, which is one minus 0.9 divided by two, this is 0 0.05, and our degrees of freedom, 64, gives us this 1.67 value for T value, okay? Our margin of error is basically this here, this formula here, as you can see, our T value, which is 1.67 times S, our sample set, S, which is, um, and so G4, which is a standard deviation, divided by the, the square of our um, 60, 65. Okay, the square root of 65, which is our, is our sample population. Again, so I'm taking the T value, which is the 1.67, multiplied by S, which is our sample standard deviation, divided by the square root of our N, which is our sample size. That gives us 1.08, okay? So now we know that our sample mean is 19.5. So what we're doing is we're taking 19.5 minus our margin of error and then plus a margin of error. So let's see, what's the point estimate number here for the population mean? Okay, the point estimate here is figured out by taking our T value, which is our point estimate of our population mean, which is our, mm, 19.5. A point estimate standard, standard deviation here is 0.5, the margin of error is 1.08, and then what's our what's our interval? What's our what's our plus and minus? What's our margin of error is 20.58 and 18.42. Okay. So there you go. So those are the values we're looking for. Okay, that's for 90% confidence level. What if I change this to 95? Let's see what happens. 0.95. Everything else stays the same. Our sample mean size, sample mean, and sample standard deviation has stays the same. Okay. Our new T value is two because again I'm taking our probability here, and then we're taking our our probability, which is one minus 0.95 divided by two, which is 0 0.025, and our degrees of freedom didn't change. It's still 64. This is a T value of two. So I'm taking two here times S, okay, which is 5.2 
divided by the square root of n, which is 65. So basically, this part here did not change, okay? This is what changed. The t value changed because I have a new confidence level, which is 0.95, okay? Nothing changes except for two, three things, the margin of error. And because the margin of error changes, we're taking again our x, which is sample mean, which is 19.5, subtracting 1.29 and adding 1.29. So that gives us our new range, okay? This is an example number three. Okay, let's get this a little larger here. It says here, use 6.84 days as a planning value for the population standard deviation, okay? Assume 95% confidence. What is the sample size would we require to obtain a margin of error of 1.5 days, okay? So now it's asking you, what, 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 do you need, what do you need to do? What do you need to do that is as far as taking a sample? What should be your sample size if you only want a 1.5 day margin error? Okay, so let's see, let's back up here. Standard deviation is what? 6.84, okay? The margin of error, it says, hey, I only want a margin of error of 1.5 days. Okay? And finally, the confidence level is 0.95, right? Again, those three numbers were given to us in the story problem here, okay? So 1 minus 0.95 is this 0 0.05. We get a Z value here using the norm SIMP divided by 2 gives us 1.5. 1.96, why do we divide by two? This is the value we need here. This is our z value, okay? So we need this, but we're doing the two tails, so we need it in half, okay? We get 1.96. And finally, our sample size right here is calculated by taking our z value, 1.96 squared times the standard deviation squared, all right, divided by what? Divided by a margin of error squared gives us, we'll say, 80, okay? We're gonna round up to the next number number 80. Right? What if we want to use 90% in a tender margin error of two days? So what changes? The standard deviation doesn't change, the margin error changes to two, and the confidence level changes to 0.9, all right? So let's look here. Now we have a new Z value, 1.6449, all right? 1.6. 449 squared times the standard deviation, which is still 6.84 squared, divided by E, 22 squared, gives us a sample size of where we round up to 32. Okay. So that's how that sheet works, okay? So again, we're, we're obtaining our, our, hey, if I want a margin of error of 1.5 days, and I have a standard deviation of 6.84, my confidence level is 95, I know a lot of numbers, 80, 80 should be our sample size, okay? And likewise, same thing, 90% confidence level, margin of error of two days, our sample size should be 32. Okay. Let's see our example four. This one's a little tricky, okay? And the reason why is look, what, look what's missing from our story problem. Let's read the story problem. Let's determine what's missing, and let's calculate the answers here. So it's here, annual starting salaries, College graduates with degrees in business administration is generally expected between thirty thousand and forty-five thousand. Assume that a ninety-five percent confidence interval estimate of the population mean annual starting salary is desired. Okay, so all right, let's see. We got a bunch of numbers here, so we don't have the standard deviation. Okay, before we had the standard deviation, which is an example three. This time. We don't have it, okay? So now we gotta calculate the standard deviation. So what they're telling us is the rule here is take your largest value, which is 45,000, and subtract the smallest value, which is 30,000, and take those two, so 45 minus 30 is 15,000. Take that 15,000, so take your largest number and your smallest number, it gives you your range, which is 15,000. Take that range, which is 15,000, and divide it by four. So 15,000 divided by 12 gives us a standard deviation of $3,750, okay? So that's our, that's our standard deviation, okay? The margin of error, what's our margin of error? So first of all, let's answer this question. 
Brings three seven fifteen. It says, how large a sample should be taken of the desired margin errors? Five hundred dollars. Okay. So, what's our margin of error? It's five hundred. And our confidence level is 0.95 given to us. Okay, same formula as in sample number four. Same exact formula. We have the numbers. We have our Z here, 1.96 squared times our standard deviation, which is um, 3,750 squared divided by E squared 500. So what we're saying is our sample size for a desired margin of $500 is round, round your answer next number. We'll say 216. All right. It says here, how large should the sample be taken if the desired margin error is 200? So nothing changes, nothing changes at all. Our standard deviation does not change, our confidence level does not change. This is the margin of error. 200. Size on its larger sample here. This is here 1350. Let's say 1351. And again, look at our margin of error, smaller. So it's saying, hey, you got to take a larger sample if you want, okay? And finally, what about 100? So I'm going to guess here if I put in 100, you should be taking a larger sample. Yes, a sample of 5,400 and let's say 5,402. So again, I'm just figuring out once I have my standard deviation, my margin of error, the confidence level to figure out my Z value, I can easily figure out the sample size. And that concludes this video on chapter eight.